Hello everybody, this is Budridge, it's a new video, I call it Sublime Text Sublaunch and I will show you a script I have made here uh, to help me work with Sublime um, and do what I showed you in the last video where I uh, used i3 to manage the Sublime windows instead of using Sublime's built-in uh, window splitting functionality but this is uh, a <laughs> tricky business so that's why I made this created this uh, helper script. So if we just start with launching Sublime normally, subble from a terminal here, uh, then we can see uh, this stuff here. This is the normal Sublime project that we have been working on all along here. Um, I have the script here. I, I just added this um, directory with, with the uh, budlime scripts that you can find here. Budlime scripts sublaunch in the budlabs organization on github whatever um, and sub, uh, the way you, to, to achieve this we, we need to be able to identify the windows uh, in a uh, in a very specific way or, or make sure which window is which and there is no uh, perfect way to do this uh, let me bring up the advanced title bar here this shows me the window uh, title of the currently open window here. Sublime, blah, 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 uh, the project, and then this. And this uh, thing also shows me the class name here, Sublime Text, and Sublime Text with a lowercase s as the instance name. Same thing we would get with the WMCTRL command, you know. Here we can see it. Instance name, Sublime Text, uh, class name, Sublime Text, capital S, and then this as the title so we cannot use the the, the window title because that changes every time we we uh, open a file you know and the project might also change because we might change project so and the instance and class name they are static you know but there is way are ways to to change this and that is what uh, uh, one thing that sublaunch helps us with so if i close this the simplest way I might change this I might only use this P option uh, but if you would uh, execute sub launch with uh, the I for instance or you can e even write the long op option instance and then uh, uh, any instance name here arrow that created uh, open the sublime window but now if we look here now it have the instance name text no it have the instance name hero you can also see it with this hero and if i would do uh, this once again sub launch and then uh, new win woo, whatever you know now we have two sublime windows open and each of them have different instance names this and and if a window is already open with the instance name we search for here, then that will just get activated. So there, now it ac activated this window. Hero, it activates the hero window. That's the simplest way, but it's not a perfect or good way. Uh, uh, you will see, uh, or the recommended way is to do this. Let's close both of these again. <clears throat> God damn it. Now if I run Sublime, it should... Uh, will probably have a blank because th this is the thing sublime uh, when you launch it it starts with the last session you know and now uh, I closed uh, this was the last session just a blank window so I open the sublime project again here I have experimented a lot with this and trust me when I say this is the recommend recommended way if you're gonna uh, use multiple windows uh, handle them with i3 and, and stuff like this one window you should have as a dedicated main window, so to speak, where you do most your stuff, you know. Uh, and the other windows, sublime windows, should be uh, bound to a specific project. Uh, and you should not change project in those windows. Try to limit yourself to that. But that doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You could just create, I have one uh, in my personal workflow, I just have a, like a, it's actually called temp, the project. It's just to, to, to be able to have this. But it, they need to be bound to a specific project. 
and one main window that is not bound to a specific project. But having multiple unbound windows uh, will just cause problems. And having opening the same project in two windows also causes problems with this session thing. So that's important also if you have a project open in, in one window, you should not, not open the same project uh, in a different window. I think that then it will just automatically close the old one and, and stuff. You can get really weird results. So, so that's some limitations. And also it's important here the order where we are closing the windows in. I'm gonna soon upload a script here called the subly kill or something that will make sure that the main window is always killed uh, last when you close Sublime. Whatever. Another, another video. Um, okay, so let's create a new project. As you can see, I have my i3 configuration uh, directory here. So if we close this project first and then we create a new one. Close project. I add this i3 uh, directory here and then we uh, project manager add new project now we don't see it here because it's out of screen but we name the project i3 and now we have two projects i3 and sublime <coughs> and for for simplicity in this window let's just uh, or this video let, let's work with two windows only and in my opinion it's very seldom that i have more than two windows it's actually very seldom that i work with more than one sublime window i, I really try that then when you get used to this working with different projects, it's it's like you, you almost don't need um, multiple windows. But it can be good for, for different things. Uh, now I will close this again. And instead of launching sublauncher with the I uh, um, option, we use this uh, profile, which is something that I invented, kind of, or invented. It's just with profile... Then it will uh, look for a project with the same name as the profile here. So for example, if I launch dash P i3, that will open a Sublime window with the i3 project open and it will rename the window Sublime underscore i3. But if it doesn't find a profile, then it will just launch Sublime but still rename uh, uh, the instance to the profile name here. And this means that we could do a sub launch uh, dash p, and then we can just call this one. Uh, this is how I like to do it main. So this will be a main uh, profile. And we don't have any projects named main. And that means, uh, and I want it like this I want the main window not to be bound to a project, but I still want to have a profile for it. Wh whatever. This is just words, you know. And now we got this and we can see uh, the instance name here is sublime main. But remember we have a project now in, in our project uh, directory and it, here called i3.sublime project. That's what it looks for, a file named uh, the same as the profile and the extension sublime project. And you can specify this in this sublaunch here, I, I don't know... Yeah, I'm gonna add so so it will read this uh, project directory from an uh, environment variable. Maybe I haven't added it. H here it is, I guess. This is the path. Yeah, but it is actually an, an environment variable here. You can set this from outside of the script if you have your uh, projects stored at, at, at a different location. And this can be very good to know. But whatever, that, that's uh, super advanced usage that we shouldn't... Uh, use now. Let's uh, do sub launch pi3. And there, now you see it opened that we a new window with the i3 project open, and we have uh, our main window with a different project. Maybe we should create uh, yet another project here. Uh, project close project, just to show you how it works with multiple. We can add uh, h top here, whatever, and then we save this. Uh, Control Shift P, Project Manager, Add New Project, call it HTOP. Now we have three projects here. HTOP, we have i3, and we now we should never change to i3 since we have that window open here. That, that, that's one of the drawbacks. And we could see that there is a star on that because then we know that project is open in a different window. Um, 
And here I could show you now. If if I would close uh, first, uh, uh, maybe it's even more visible here. This normal uh, Sublime uh, uh, project open. Close that. Close i3 project window. And now even if I launch here Sublime P main, that will open. It will call this uh, window Sublime main, but it will have the i3 project open. So this is why it's important the, the order you close the windows in. And if I would open i3, uh, p i3 here now, I'm not really sure what happened. Well, now it seemed to work at least. Now we have two windows with, with the same project open. Uh, and this main window, th this is how we want it. Okay. Um, the reason I wanted to use the i3 uh, project is because uh, we can do cool things with the w window manager. This is of course wi uh, i3 specific, exactly what I'm doing here, but it should work with other uh, um, window managers as well. I, I bet you can do window rules and, and the key bindings and stuff for them as well. These are my default key bindings and here you can see I also use i3 run here, but don't... don't Ignore this uh, for now. Maybe I will show you some someday why I have done it like this. But I like to have my sublime key bindings on super s or super shift s or things like that. But now I comment the, commented them out. Uh, let's create some new uh, bindings here for super plus s. Execute uh, sub launch uh, p main so super s that should uh, uh, switch to to my uh, main sub launch window or uh, create a new one if it doesn't exist and then we can do one super shift s for our i3 uh, window so i reload um, the config now if i hit super s it activates my Sublime window. Super Shift S activates i3 window. Now you see how, how this works, right? Now we could uh, uh, resize them independently, you know, and move them around. I have some cool uh, window resizing things here going on that you can find in the i3 S suit. It's built in now. Whatever. Um, Okay, 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 okay. Mm. Another good thing uh, by identifying windows, not just adding them to key bindings, it is uh, to make window rules. And this is the syntax for creating a window rule. Uh, here I also use my special i3 FIRA. This is what it's all about, my i3 FIRA project uh, to, to uh, have different tabbed containers. But this, you could replace this with uh, move to a workspace or, and, and the, the same method for as assign workspaces and stuff. It, it doesn't really matter. But creating window rules, how you want to, the windows to spawn and appear and stuff, that's what you can do when you have a separate instance name for them like this. So let's create two rules here. One for sublime uh, main here. Main, uh, and then I like to set the title format, which is the uh, uh, thing that you can see on the tabs here. I have Clavaro, Vivaldi, and URXVT. Uh, so we could name this title anything, you know, uh, main sublime window. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just to make it visible for you, I wrote a long name there. Then this weird part here, that is what's uh, moving it into the right container. And container, that's A, B, C and D. And this will only work, I repeat, if you have i3 FIRA enabled and stuff, then this part would work. But I think you, you get the ID uh, anyway. So C container, that's this. And this is where I like my main windows. Let's copy this and make one for uh, the i3 window as well. Then we name this i3 and I want that in the D container here now. D and uh, i3 sublime window we can call that there save uh, and then I will close uh, uh, the sublime windows and reload i3 and now if I hit super s it should spawn the main window in our in my main container here so so to speak 
and it did super shift s spawns i3 project but now we can see this is almost useless because the sidebar takes up more or less uh, the whole window here but this is a cool thing uh, we can hide the sidebar here uh, in view menu uh, hide sidebar now the sidebar is gone uh, if I close this window and uh, open it again now it remembers this the project uh, remembers the UI settings and we could hide more elements here we could hide uh, the minimap we can hide the status bar we can hide uh, uh, even hide the menu itself uh, and you can hide the uh, line numbers and everything maybe not line numbers from this uh, um, menu here but you can do it in the settings we will look into that soon here whatever 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 um, and the tab bar also I like to hide that hide tabs so now th th this looks better and I also hide the menu by default but let's keep it now okay um, so now we have two separate windows here and we can uh, you know the, the the advantage of this is uh, and you cannot do this with for example tmux and vim and stuff because now i can have two panes here with my editors but i can just switch one pane to the file manager or something else you know in a very convenient way uh, i can hide them and show them but this is i3 feed uh, special things you know but whatever uh, another very very big advantage of, of this method is we are now having two different uh, projects open here and the one cool thing with projects uh, alt p edit current project this will edit my i3 project here now is that you can have independent settings for um, uh, uh, projects so if we do this then let's see what kind of settings we have um, well, let's take these settings instead here. Preferences, sublime settings. And just copy. You can copy these two. So, for instance, here now, if I would change the font size here to uh, 28, save. You see, now the i3 project have a much larger font size than the this is the global settings then you can have independent settings for each uh, project but maybe uh, we want the opposite here maybe 12 instead because then it's it's uh, a little bit better uh, when we have a, a, a narrow uh, thing like this let's see if we can find the, the line number thing there and the gutter and hide that here, here we have gutter we set that to false there, now it hid uh, both the line numbers and the other uh, part here, making it even more. And I like to have one project like that, like this, very narrow and maybe even a different font that's easier to read with uh, or smaller, where I just uh, take notes and stuff. Uh, and stuff. It, it, it's very convenient. And you can e even change the, the color scheme. Uh, now we have... Uh, uh, breakers here I know there's one that's called Mariana because Mariana is a Swedish word for yeah Mary Jane you know and there now we have different color schemes for different projects and the settings will be remembered and um, if I close this project here now and then we can actually we, we can open the project here if we wanted to uh, control alt P get the project list if I select i3 now now we get the, those project settings in this window, so it's project uh, independent and not window independent. But this is one of the cool and big advantages. You cannot do this when you have the internal window splitting. You cannot have different uh, settings for different uh, panes in, in the window, but you can have different settings for different projects. You can have different settings in the windows if they are of different uh, file types. Then you can have syntax uh, dependent settings and stuff like that but that just gets uh, uh, messy if you want it to always have the same settings in one pane and so on Th this is a, uh, this is really good but there are some draw drawbacks of course one is this if if the wrong window is closed uh, um, you have to close them in a certain order and here we can also see the title format main sublime window if i make and, and yeah and this is another great uh, benefit 
you can have one window floating you cannot do this with, with internal split windows I can have one floating um, and now let's hide the menu here then you can have one very minimal sublime window floating and the other one tiled really really uh, com convenient Uh, and we can see here this title format is here and this is here that's what we set in in uh, the, the configuration file Oops. with the window rules we created I, I, I will add these uh, how the rules look like and uh, links to the videos where I show with this i3 FIDA stuff even if that is not needed not even i3 is needed here I'm just using that as an example but but you get the message the important thing is um, to, to be able to rename and distinguish uh, windows uh, and rename the instance names then you can manage them with any window manager in a, in a convenient way and toggle them with the different hotkeys and stuff like that you know uh, and set window rules and, and the, 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 the unique thing here with this uh, script I made sub launch is that it also uh, takes projects into account and, and can spawn uh, windows with, with, a with a certain project uh, active for you so you can have different uh, settings for different sublime windows I don't know if you get what, what this is really but it's uh, I would say the uh, uh, that I feel almost uh, handicapped if I if, if I cannot use this setup now and and I try to do this with all my uh, stuff you know I have shown you that I like to have uh, th this is the same method two different uh, uh, Thunar instances instances and two different windows then you can have and then we could have um, yeah Thunar sublime bling why 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 mess around with with the uh, uh, terminal multiplexers and and the other stuff when you got i3 and can do everything with that you know it, it it's the most powerful thing we got and then you can mix uh, uh, terminals you can mix uh, the with the GUIs and text editors and whatever I think it's great so i hope uh, i gave you some ideas again uh, feel free to try my my scripts here and if, if they they are not p perfect now i'm i'm constantly working and improving these budline things uh, but uh, feel free to report an issue if you find one but uh, I, I i know there are bugs and and the, and the weirdness in in these files so so be aware be, see this more as a um, as a um, yeah it's a work in progress but it's it's soon ready for for what what should we say an alpha release or something i say thank you for watching uh, in the ne next sublime video then uh, let's enable this vintage i just want to uh, get you guys uh, um, to uh, show you the settings that i really have and it's when you enable vintage that's when things are are getting really uh, when you really need to, to make a lot of changes to the defaults uh, whatever. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.